Hello, my name is Lawrence Wilson, and welcome to a study through the book of Hebrews. Just like the name suggests, the book was originally written to primarily a Jewish audience. However, it does have application for our lives even still today. The book was written to Jewish Christians who were scattered all throughout the Roman Empire. They were scattered partially because they were dealing with persecution for their faith. And so many of these Jewish Christians began to consider whether it would be better to return back to the principles of Judaism as outlined in the Old Testament rather than continuing on in their pursuit of Christ. And so the author to the book is writing to these Hebrew believers to encourage them that Jesus is better in every possible way and that following him is better than the principles of Judaism as outlined in the Old Testament. So really, if you want to summarize the book of Hebrews down to its one main theme, that theme would be that Jesus is better. We get a glimpse of this just from the opening few verses. Beginning in verse 1 of Hebrews, we read, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. So we see a contrast already between the Old Testament and the New Testament age in which we live. That he said, long ago, God the Father spoke to us in all these different ways, many different times, through prophets. Or, in other words, God used individuals as sort of a go-between to communicate to his people. God, of course, being holy and righteous, can have no fellowship with those who are not holy. And as we know from our previous studies of the book of Romans or Exodus, that we are all sinners. None of us can stand in the presence of a holy God in our own merit. And so God had to use these prophets to carry his message to his people. In fact, many of the books that we have recorded in the Old Testament were written by some of these prophets. So in the Old Testament times, the author of Hebrews says, the, uh, our, our Father God spoke to us through the prophets, through an intermediary. But now he says, in these last days, in the more recent times, he has spoken to us through his Son, by his Son, Jesus Christ, who of course we know is God incarnate, God in the flesh. So, when we consider relationships even that we have with other people, I think we can all realize and agree that it's better, especially the closer the relationship, it is better to be able to speak with that person directly than it is to have an intermediary. You know, consider a romantic relationship, people who are in love, right? You want to be able to speak directly to that one that you love. You would not want to have to use another person to pass messages back and forth between you. That would kind of kill some of that romance. It would not feel as intimate. It would not feel as loving. And so we see a similar concept here already in how the New Testament and Jesus is better. That God himself came in the person of Jesus Christ to communicate with us, to have fellowship with us, as opposed to the Old Testament in which there were intermediaries, these prophets who had to bring the messages of God. But we begin to even see more about Jesus in the next few verses. So we said that God spoke to our fathers by the prophets, and in the last days he spoke to us by his Son, and he tells us some things about Jesus, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. So Christ is described here as the heir of all things and that creator of the world. Everything belongs to Jesus Christ. So if we're talking about someone who's better here, how can we convince ourselves that he's better? Well, everything belongs to him and he created 
everything. It goes on to say he is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. In other words, as we mentioned before, Jesus Christ himself is God in the flesh. He has all of the attributes of God. He has all of the characteristics of God. And without him, this entire universe would fall apart. After, it says about Jesus, after making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus Christ, the one who actually came, lived a perfect life here on this earth to rescue us from our sins so that we could be clean, so that we could have a right relationship with God. And then afterward, he says that he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. A lot of times we skip over smaller words or things that we think, okay, what's the significance? We don't really understand the significance of it. But there's something very powerful in saying that Jesus, after accomplishing his mission, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, right? Think about you go off to a hard day of work, and you come home, then you do what? You sit down in your favorite chair, right? Or you lie down in your bed to rest. That is a sign of being finished with what you have to do right? Maybe even if you come home from work, you don't immediately sit down. Maybe you've got chores to take care of. You've got kids to feed. You've got whatever, right? But you understand still that you, while there's still work to be done, you can't sit down. To say that you have sat down means the work is finished. It's over. Now you can sit down. You have completed your tasks, your work. So to say that Christ now sits, he has sat down at the right hand of God the Father, is this it, mental picture that the author is trying to give us about Jesus Christ having come and completed the work of salvation, right? Reminding us that there's nothing left for us to do to earn our salvation. Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, Jesus Christ who created the world, who sustains the world, who accomplished our salvation, did everything that he needed to do and now has sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. And as we contemplate Jesus these next few weeks through the book of Hebrews, let us consider all of the ways that Jesus is better than whatever we would begin to set our minds on, than whatever we would want to essentially go back to, right? I told you that these Hebrews receiving a message from this author, who, by the way, you may have heard me say the author a couple of times, that's because the author of Hebrews is unknown. There are several theories out there about who it probably is, okay? Um, we can give you some resources to do further research if you want, really want to know. Essentially, uh, the author did not put his name on the book. There are a few identifying characteristics we can use to try and guess at who it might be, but ultimately it doesn't matter, right? We believe that the Bible is inspired by God, and so whoever this author was is writing to these Hebrews who are essentially trying to go back to their life before Christ because they're thinking that maybe there were some aspects of the Judaism Jewish culture, there were some aspects of the Jewish religion, and maybe it was better, right? We have a tendency to do the same thing. We want to look at maybe things in our past and go, you know, this Christian stuff is hard to deal with. You know, maybe we've lost friendships. Maybe we've lost a job. You know, maybe people have, have not treated us the same way. And we have this tendency to want to go back to something else, thinking that maybe it's better. I encourage you as we go forward in this study, consider all of the different ways that Jesus is better than whatever we think is actually going to bring joy and satisfaction in our lives. And so this final thing in our first few verses we're looking at here that the author says here about Jesus, that having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. He tells us here that Jesus has become far superior 
to the angels. That will be the subject of our next uh, video, the next section that we'll be looking at in the book of Hebrews. So be looking forward to that, seeing how Jesus is superior to the angels. But until then, again, begin to contemplate these truths of how Jesus is better than whatever we want to put against him. He is absolutely better. I hope and pray that something said here ministers to your heart and that you share these truths with those around you. Thank you, and God bless.